Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about this video today. We are going to be talking about my most repurchased makeup products of all time. These are the things that I have repurchased some multiple times, some just a couple of times, because let's be honest, it is not often that I go through a makeup product from start to finish because I try so many different things out. But these are the ones that I will go back to again and again because they are that good. I think I did a video similar to this three or four years ago, but it has been a while, so I wanted to do an updated version for you guys. So we are going to get into it. I've got a lot of stuff here to go over with you. But before we do that, if you are new here, special welcome to you. Please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure that your notifications are turned on. With that said, let's get to it. All right, so let's start with the primer. I have just one primer. This is the only primer that I have ever repurchased, but it is my very favorite. You've probably heard me talk about it before. Flower Beauty Celestial Priming Whip. I'm obsessed with this stuff. I mean, I have, I have several primers that I like a lot, but this is one that I just feel like is the best of all worlds. It is super hydrating, has this cooling sensation because it is kind of like a foamy gel. The only bad thing about this, I do like the packaging, but it's hard to control how much comes out, especially because it does kind of bro like a foam. So even just a tiny bit of it, like you get a good amount. I mean, this is, let's just use it as a moisturizer which it actually will probably work just fine for that. It's very serum-like, has a bit of a golden, very subtle golden glow to it. It's not as glowy as something along the lines of like a Hollywood Flawless Filter, the Say Glowy Super Gel. It's not that extreme. It's more hydrating than glowy, but it does give this really subtle kind of golden glow and tons of hydration, the perfect prep for foundation. Okay, speaking of foundations, I do have four foundations that I have repurchased several times. The one that I've repurchased the most, you guys will know, I think I talked about this the last time I did this video. In fact, I talk about it all the time. It's the Valuable Fresh Wear from L'Oreal. Such a good foundation. It's a great mix in to other foundations to get them to last a little bit longer. It's very budge proof. If you are someone that your foundation just wears off or transfers, or maybe you have oily skin. I mean, I don't have oily skin, so I'm kind of supposing this to be true, but it is a more dry foundation that just does not move. I mean, on a hot summer day, this is the foundation that I will reach for, and I love mixing it in with other foundations as well. I think this is my fourth bottle of this. I have never bought four bottles of any other foundation. There's a few that have been close, but this is by far my most repurchased. Another favorite of mine is the It Cosmetics CC Illumination. I really like this foundation. This is one of my oldest favorites. I'll probably continue to repurchase this one. But that said, I do feel like there's some other foundations that maybe have surpassed my love for this one. It is a really good BB cream. I know it has really good skincare ingredients in it, which is probably its greatest selling point that I would give to you, including the SPF 50, which is pretty awesome. But it's not the most long wearing. The shade match is not perfect for me and they don't have a wide shade range. And it is, it's a higher coverage foundation, which surprises me the shade range is so small considering it has such high coverage. That said, it does have a beautiful glow to it. I think it looks very pretty on the skin. I wish it just lasted a little bit longer and the shades, they had a couple more shades and undertones to pick from. That would make it that much better. But I know a lot of people love this one and it's been one of my longest standing favorites and I have repurchased. I think this is my third tube of this. Sticking with something similar is the Maison Snell Repair BB Cream. I could have also mentioned the Misha BB Cream, which I own and I own, I have owned three shades of that. I currently own just one that I'm just about out of. However, I do like this one just a little bit better. I think it gives me a tiny bit more coverage. The shade match is also better for me. So I have shade number 27, which is a really good match in the Maison for me. I also use shade 27 in the Misha, but that one's just a little bit too dark, a little bit too orangey, but then I think the shade below that is 23, which has this really strange gray cast to it that is just so different from what 27 gives me that I can't get that one to work for me. So Korean BB creams and CC creams, shade range is often gonna be an issue. It's hard to find your perfect shade in those and they don't give you a lot of variety to pick from. But this is the closest that I found yet and it's in a great formula, has great skincare in it and it's very affordable. If this was too much for you, this is much more affordable. The last foundation is the Milani Conceal and Perfect. This is my third bottle of this. I decluttered a shade that wasn't quite right for me that I had almost used up, but this is my second bottle of shade number three. So good. If you're looking for a higher coverage foundation from the drugstore, I love this one. I think it's great. It's very thick and creamy. So if you like something a little more serum-like, this might not be the one for you, but I don't find it to feel heavy on the skin. It's pretty long wearing and has, I would say high medium coverage. This is one that I love for that specific reason for its coverage. I do just want to say though, I have a feeling this will probably be in this video the next time I do this a year or two down the road because I use this foundation more than any other foundation lately. Like it's taken over the top spot 
and caused everything else to kind of gather dust. So I was looking at my concealers thinking, okay, what is my most repurchased concealer? Honestly, you guys, I don't know that I have one. I realized I don't think there's many concealers that I have purchased multiples of, unless I initially bought multiple shades of to kind of mix and match, but I haven't actually used up a concealer other than my Revlon Candid Concealer, which I believe has officially been discontinued. So that would be the one I would have mentioned. There are several that I imagine down the road, I probably could say are my most repurchased, including the Kosas. I'm just about out of my second tube of this one, but I'm not quite there yet, so I don't feel like I could officially mention it today. So let's talk about a powder instead. Rimmel Stay Matte, this is my go-to powder. You might know I am not a powder expert or a powder connoisseur. I just, not that I don't use powder, I probably use powder almost every day. This is the one that I easily use the most. I think I have, this is like my fourth or fifth. I actually have two of these right now because I do go through them kind of quickly, which is strange because it's a very lightweight powder and I don't use a ton of powder on my skin, but I do need powder just to set areas that have a lot of fine lines, my forehead in between my brows, my smile lines, and my eyelids. But I love that one because it's so lightweight. It doesn't give you that powdery look or feel. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. I have just one highlighter that I have repurchased multiple times. Again, this is a category that surprised me a bit. I'm surprised I haven't gone through as many highlighters. This is the Wet n Wild Precious Petals. This is my second pan of this one. I totally used up my first one, which is surprising because I've never done that before. And I just noticed today, I'm actually wearing it on my skin today, my very first signs of pan on this one as well, which makes me wonder, even though this one has like an average amount of product inside, Maybe there's something about this. Maybe it's softer pressed to where I go through it more quickly. I'm not sure. I don't feel like I use it that often compared to some of my other highlighters, but I do love this one. If you're looking for an affordable drugstore highlighter, this one's fantastic. Now I've tried some of their other shades. I don't think they're nearly as good. And this shade, when I'm a little more fair than I am right now, is gonna be a little bit too dark for me. But in the summertime, late spring and fall, when I have a bit of glow or a bit of summer tan going on, this is such a great, Highlighter, it gives you such good glow, really good formula, and you can get it for under five bucks, which is amazing. Okay, let's talk about a couple of brow products. I wanted to mention the Essence Brow Styling Soap Set, so I have a funny story about this. I love this stuff. I love a good brow soap, like a brow wax or like a brow soap. This is really more of a soap than a wax. So this is my second pan of this, and the, seriously, I feel like the day after I bought this, for the second time, I couldn't find it on Ulta's website anymore. I haven't actually checked the Essence website. If I can find it there, I will link it down below. This one is my very favorite. I like it better than the ColourPop Feather Effect one, which I did also like, but this one is, I think, the best one. Super cheap. Since I couldn't find this anymore, I did pick this up from Amazon. This is the Sotgo Brow Styling Soap. It's just a little, like, tin of clear soap. It's $3.99. It comes with a spoolie. It's super, super cheap. I think it's even cheaper than the Essence. However, this one's just a little bit different. If you look at the surface of this, it gets kind of grainy on the top, so we can get a little bit more clumpy in the brows. I have to wet my spoolie just a little bit more, which I kind of don't like to do because then it changes the texture of the product in your brows if your spoolie is too wet. There's definitely a bit of a learning curve with a brow soap in general, like making sure that your brush is not too wet or too dry, making sure you don't have too much product, but you get just enough so that they really hold, but not so much that they look too powdery or white. But once you get it down, these are so good. If you have stubborn brows that you want them to look kind of fluffy and feathery, but they won't stay in place if you just use like a very soft hold gel. This is the way to go. Okay, I have two mascaras. There are others that I have repurchased multiple times, but I don't know that like, like the cosmetic superhero. I'm not loving that mascara as much as I used to. And that's partly because it is so, it runs a lot on my very watery eyes. And the older I get, the more my eyes water, even when I'm not out in the wind or out in the sun. I just have more sensitive eyes than I used to, and that one just doesn't hold up, even though I love how it looks on my lashes. But this one, the Flower Beauty Dream Warrior Mascara, I think this is my second tube, and I'm about out of this one. It is so good. Very long wearing. I wouldn't say it's waterproof, but it is quite water resistant. If I just have some mildly watery eyes, this one is so good. And this does the best things for my lashes. It makes my lashes look absolutely amazing. I am wearing it today, but I do have false lashes on that we'll talk about in a sec. Such a good mascara. I absolutely love this one. I also have repurchased the Maybelline Sky High mascara several times. The last time I went to repurchase it, I normally get just the standard pink tube. That one was out of stock the last time I went to pick it up, so I tried out the Cosmic Black one. I'm gonna tell you guys I don't like this one quite as much. I don't think it's quite as long wearing and water resistant as the original pink one. And I'm talking about the original version, not the waterproof version. I don't do waterproof mascaras. They're just a little too 
hard on my eyelashes, but I like my mascaras to be water resistant. So, which I feel like is asking a lot of a mascara to not be waterproof, but also not flake or smudge when my eyes are watery. Fortunately, they do make mascaras that do that, including the original Sky High mascara. I just get the normal black version. I Maybe it's the blackest black. I feel like Maybelline's one of these brands that does like black noir, black is black, and then just black, and maybe brown black. And it's like, which one? Which one's darkest? I don't even know. I would assume black noir. Doesn't noir mean black? Anyways, always kind of makes me laugh, but I do love the Sky High mascara. It does, it doesn't make my lashes look as full as say like my Panorama mascara that you guys know I've been loving, but it does a good job of giving me some volume, really good length, fantastic separation. Separation? Oh my gosh, that's not a word. Separation, and it holds a curl really well and is water resistant, which I love. Okay, bronzers. Now there are not many bronzers that I have gone through. The only one that I have ever repurchased that I will continue to repurchase as long as they make it because it is one of my favorite powder bronzers of all time, and that's the Flower Beauty Heat Wave in Sunrise L1. I'm wearing this bronzer on my cheeks today. It's this lovely kind of slightly rosy color. It's so, so good. It looks amazing, especially if you have fair skin. Fantastic formula. It has a subtle, subtle glow to it. It almost looks like it would be kind of like gray and ashy. Do you guys see that? But somehow when you put it on your cheeks, it looks kind of like rosy. It's very interesting. I love it. It looks so pretty on the skin. And one of the few bronzers that I recommend to anyone that ever asked me for a bronzer that's not going to turn them orange, this is the one. Okay, now this one's not official yet, but I do plan on repurchasing this one soon because I know I'm just about out of this one and I use it a lot. And that is the Physicians Formula Diamond Bronzer. This is the Bronze Jam, the lighter shade. I believe this comes in two shades. I have hip pan on this one. And when I use this, I use a good amount of it. Now, for the price, this isn't the cheapest bronzer at the drugstore, and you, especially if you don't have super fair skin, if you have more just like light skin, it's a very light colored bronzer. So I really build this up on my cheeks. I love the hydration and the glow that it gives. It is a very emollient cream bronzer. So if you're not into that kind of creamy feeling on your cheeks or that added hydration, you might not like this one but I love the color. I love how this blends and just sits on top of the skin. It looks very natural and hydrating. For how quickly I've gone through it, I think it's kind of pricey, but that said, I do plan to repurchase this one. So giving that one a little head start. I do want to mention a few blushes. Now I have never fully used up a new blush, but my caveat for this category is if I try out a blush and I love it so much that I go back and buy multiple other shades. I'm kind of using that as my most repurchase, so I don't know. Call me a cheater, that's fine. First off, I had to mention the Flower Beauty Gel Crush blushes. I think I initially tried out Strawberry Crush and maybe Peach Crush. I love them so much that I went back and bought every shade that they offer, and they are all amazing. I love them all. These are so good. Now, they do have a very subtly tacky feel to them. So if you're sensitive to that, if you like something that kind of sets down, you're probably not going to like these because they do stay a little bit tacky on your cheeks. They also look lovely on your lips. Honestly, I don't know that I could pick a favorite. I would say the most like generic one that, I don't know, if you like more of like a safe nude color and you're more like lighter fair skinned would probably be Peach Crush, but I love them all so much. I think they're all amazing. They just give my cheeks that kind of like plumping, kind of hydrated look that just is, is the best. Same is true for my Juicy Ping water blushes. You guys know how much I love these. Now, I actually don't use these. I mean, I, I use these, but there was a time that I only used these and had a hard time using anything else, but you guys, blush is the thing. Other than eyeshadows, it is the most numerous category of all of all my makeup, and blush is one of those things that you just don't need very much. So it's you pro you'd have a hard time, even if you just had a couple of blushes, actually using one up, especially if you're a makeup lover and you try a lot of different things out, but I do still love these. I am wearing on my cheeks today this one right here, which I think is Raspberry PK02. It is so lovely. I love them all. I love the nail polish applicator. It's so fun. Now these ones, they actually kind of, I wouldn't say they set down, but they dry down. They're more of a watery gel formula than like a kind of buttery formula. So they don't stay sticky on your cheeks. I'd almost say they're a stain, but they're not as strong as a stain, say something along the lines of like the milk. They're a little more softly pigmented, but they're absolutely lovely and they smell like apples. Okay, let's go through just a couple of like liners. So two brow pencils. First off, the Benefit Precisely My Brow. I think I currently have a backup of this right now. This one's relatively newly opened and then I also have a travel size of this one. I do recommend buying it in bulk on sale if you can find it during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty because $24 for this, even though I love it and I do think it is the best slim brow pencil I have ever tried, 
24, I think it's $24. It's a lot of money to spend on a brow pencil. I do have a, what I consider to be a pretty close dupe from the drugstore that's only $2.98 and it comes from, I think it's Relove by Revolution Beauty. It's the Blade Brow. You can buy it at Walmart. I will link it right here for you guys, but it's nice and stiff, has a great spoolie on it. Very pigmented, but not too pigmented or too dark. Their shade range is pretty awful, but it's much cheaper than this one. I don't think it's quite as good, but it's awfully, awfully close. I also wanted to mention my Ulta Beauty Ultra Slim Brow Pencil in Ash Taupe. This is another one that I wouldn't necessarily call it a dupe. I think this one's a little bit more waxy, not quite as stiff, and I kind of like the stiffness of this one, but it's very close. It's a good shade. You can get these for, I think full price they're $10, but if you find them on sale, you can usually get them for around five or six, which is a really good deal. For the lips, I want to mention two. First off, the LA Girl Non-Stop Nude Ultimate auto ultimate intense stay auto liner lip liner this is a really good shade really good formula it's retractable which i love it's one of the most affordable long wearing lip lip liners that i that i own i probably will continue to repurchase this one i'll be honest i have some higher end ones that i like more now like i think the formulas are just a little bit better but if you're looking for something from the drugstore this is still one of the ones i would recommend the most and i have repurchased this a few times i think this is my third one i also wanted to mention my natasha denona i need a rose lip crayon in cala i hope they still make this one so this is my backup my regular one is actually up in my purse i use this one a lot i'm probably about two-thirds of the way done with my original this is such a good lip pencil i love the color of this one it's a nice kind of peachy nude i also love the i need a nude in cleo this one's more of like a brownie beigey pink a la iconic nude from charlotte tilbury similar to that i also love this one but i've gone back to using cleo more recently scratch that cala more recently and just was reminded why this is such a good pencil it has the perfect amount of peach the perfect amount of pink it's not too light or too dark so it gives me good definition but it's just really easy to wear on its own with just a simple gloss on top and it's so long wearing. I love the Natasha Denona lip liner formulas. I was taking a look at my glosses thinking that I would have several to mention of glosses that I've repurchased, but I realized probably I would say my most kind of repurchased gloss would have to be the Lifter Gloss and I will say this is Opal. This is my original Opal that I've had for like two and a half years now. It's almost gone and I will definitely repurchase this specific shade when I am done with it. Now I also have several other shades of the Lifter Gloss. I think I own four or five of them now that I have the Chili Pepper one. I love the Lifter Gloss. I think it's the best gloss at the drugstore. It's, it's a little pricier than the one that I'll mention next, but it feels very high-end. It performs very high-end. It smells amazing. I absolutely love it. But by far my most repurchased lip gloss over the last like decade, maybe more than a decade, is Creme Brulee from NYX. This one is a classic. I think I have three of these in my drawer. This one I could probably get rid of because I think it's pretty much gone. Very basic light light kind of peachy nude it's got a little bit of pink in it, it looks amazing on top of a gloss I would say it's like 50% opaque so a little bit of the color underneath will shine through but it has a good amount of color to it so you could definitely wear this on its own and that goes for all the NYX glosses honestly I own I have a whole drawer if you've ever seen any of my declutters or like my makeup collection or shop my stash videos I have one compartment in my lip gloss drawer just dedicated to the NYX glosses because I think these are so great and I've bought so many of them over the years. Okay, we're just about there. I want to mention the setting spray. This is the All Nighter setting spray from Urban Decay. I don't use a long wearing setting spray all the time. And I also have to say, I have been trying the, the Charlotte Tilbury one recently. I think I do like that one a little bit better. The sprayer is superior for sure. It is, I believe, more expensive. I will list on the screen for you guys right here. I'm gonna go and compare like price per ounce. I'm assuming the Charlotte Tilbury one is a little bit more pricey than the Urban Decay. If that is not true, I would say go for the Charlotte Tilbury one over the Urban Decay, but I do like the Urban Decay one as well. I just don't think the sprayer is quite as good. It's not bad, it's just, I feel like setting spray sprayers have come a long way. And this one's just kind of basic. I do think having a good long wearing setting spray does help your makeup last a bit longer. It's just not one of those things I feel the need to do every single day. I had to mention these lashes right here. I am wearing them on my eyes today. The Eyelure London three quarter length N003s. These are so good. They're feathery light. They're very natural looking. They're three quarter 
lashes. And by the way, little tip on these, especially because my eyes are, I have very small eyes. A three quarter lash is almost a full lash on me. I actually take, so these ones I've actually already worn, so I've already done this, but I will take the last two clusters on the outer side, which if you look at these, they're a little fuller and darker on the outside. I will trim off the last two clusters and then they go to about halfway, which makes them much easier to wear, much easier to form to your eye and much more comfortable, which I think is the most important thing. That is the thing that holds me back from lashes more than anything is if I can fill them heavily on my eyes, I'm never gonna wear them, even for a special occasion. And I probably won't be able to put them on because I, I don't know what it is with me. I have been trying for years. And I've long given up, but these, even a dummy can put these lashes on. They're very easy to use, they're comfortable. And honestly, even if, if that's even too long, too long for you, you could cut a couple of clusters off or even cut the inner two off and just have them be like outer quarter lashes. And they will look amazing. They blend in so easily to your natural eyelashes. They're not too long to where you look like you're gonna fly away from your lashes. They give you just enough kind of dramatic flair without looking obvious. Okay, and last but not least, you guys are probably wondering, why did she, where's her Wet n Wild pencil? Of course, I'm gonna mention my Wet n Wild pencil. This might be number 42 that I bought on this pencil. I have so many of these. Okay, that, that was maybe an exaggeration, but definitely more than 10 perhaps closer to 20 that I have bought of these over the years. Honestly, I sometimes like to buy these because a brand new Wet n Wild Sima Brown Now pencil with a sharp tip, you can't beat it. It's like pigmented and super sharp and precise. Now I definitely can get it pretty sharp, but I just really enjoy using a brand new pencil. So I probably have like 13 of these that are about this big, just kind of floating around my car, my drawers. If you have watched me since day one, you will have seen this little guy appear in probably hundreds of videos at this point. And that is everything, you guys. Those are all of my most repurchased makeup products. I hope I didn't leave anything out. There's a good chance I did. I mean, sometimes I have stuff floating around in like cars and purses that I may have overlooked, but these were the obvious ones. Let me know what are what is your number one repurchased of all time makeup product that you will buy probably until you die. That also let us know down in the comments below, but that is going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me remind you one more time. If you haven't subscribed, please do that before you leave and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. I feel like every time I go to start filming, it's like the perfect, my kids are like, all right, mom's going downstairs. Let's go lift weights. Keith, you can make as much noise as you want now. Thanks. Such a good kid. I can hear him like taking the plates off of the rack and like really gently putting down a 45 pound plate. I'm sure that's not easy. I have the best kids, honestly. They're so, they're so good and thoughtful.